Was there anything that you felt like but, you missed? Or? Well, you could just say at the end, because well, that's fishing, you know, like going back to what I said, you know, um, you can think you know too much. You know, the fish were on the other side of the lake. I thought it was all over, but you never know. Sometimes you, you think you know, but you never know when it's going to happen. Okay, we're rolling here, all good. Yeah, cool, cool. Okay, cool. So I've wanted to um, catch a UK 50 pound common for, for a number of years. Obviously I caught 50 pound mirrors, caught 60 pound mirror in the UK. So a 50 pound common is something that I wanted in my CV as such. Um, I had a little go at Burfield, and to be honest, I haven't really got the time to commit to, to that sort of that sort of angling, you know, that is a, a seriously, seriously difficult fish to catch. Whereas the, the Bayswater Coconut Common, when I joined it, it wasn't that sort of size, but it has sort of crept up to that size. And the, and the previous autumn, Adam Penning caught it at 52 pounds. Now, suddenly I've got a lake that's five minutes in the car from my house with a 50 pounder in it. So last autumn, despite having kids, you know, just the birth of my first children, two at the same time, and then within 10 days of being born, I was having another little go, you know, so that's that's how much I'm into it, you know, I can't resist, it's what I do. And I had a really good go at it. I think me, between me and my friend Phil, we had 20 fish that autumn, which is really good going on there. And between the two of us, we never caught that fish. And considering it's, uh, it's quite friendly, to call it a mug would be unfair, but it does come out between three to six times every year. So when somebody catches it, it does, it, the game's not over, you've still got a chance to catch that fish. Um, but obviously I said we didn't catch it and I'd already really had it in my heart to go to Orient the following spring. I'd, I hadn't fished Orient the previous year because of the kids and I couldn't be away from home. Um, but now everything was sort of more settled. I, I really wanted to have another go at that style of fishing. It's, you know, fishing gravel pits and, and small lakes in the UK. That's my bread and butter. I've done it for, for as long as I can remember and I always feel in my comfort zone doing that but Orion takes me out of that and I, I really wanted another slice of it. So I went to Orion and during that time, my friend Phil, who had fished the previous autumn, he'd, um, he'd caught this coconut common and he caught it at 49 pounds, 15 ounces. And it was very early April before they'd sort of bloated up with the eggs. And uh, I've gone to, to Orion in May, I've caught a 64 pounder. And the whole time I'm there, um, I'm in contact with Phil, I'm like, has it been out again yet? Has it been out again yet? And it's like, no, no, it's not been out. And the longer it goes, the longer it goes, I know that this is gonna be 50 pounds. You know, it's gonna be that sort of size. I went there, it was due out. May, let's be honest, May is probably the easiest month to catch a big carp of any time. And I've only ever fished bays water in the, in the colder weather in the more difficult times. So I was feeling pretty confident, not necessarily catching it, but I was feeling pretty confident that over four, four nights I think it was, that I could probably drag out, there's so many 35 pounds in there, I could probably drag one of these out for the camera. But ultimately, that is the one that I wanted. Um, and the session sort of started with me running around like an absolute madman. Because I'd only ever fished there in the winter, I wasn't used to seeing so many fish. And everywhere I went, there was just fish, and they only stayed somewhere for five minutes, and they moved somewhere else. And I was putting zigs in front of them, I was putting PVA bags in front of them, but I wasn't getting any reaction. And in May, when it gets really hot like that, they can start to become, I don't know, they're sort of more, more driven by the, what's gonna happen, the spawning in the coming weeks, than really into the food. But in that sort of time, they, are, they can be snatchy at zigs. And that particular fish is an, it's renowned for coming out on a piece of black foam. I know that sounds ridiculous, but so many times that fish has been caught on it. And in my mind, I'd sort of set in stone that I was gonna catch this fish on a piece of black foam because so many other people did. Anyway, four nights in May, at what you call clubbing season, and three nights in I've caught, I think it was three nights in, I caught absolutely nothing. And then the weather changed. It came in cloudy, a big easterly, so the temperature sort of dropped a bit. Um, and the swifts were coming in and taking off the surface. And that is a sign that there's a hatch, which is probably the best time to be using zig rigs. But, but, there was this massive brown muddy line running down the middle of the lake. And that doesn't happen for no reason. You know, that, that is an obvious sign of some very serious feeding activity going down on the deeps. Now I know that, I've been fishing long enough and I'm not stupid. But in amongst this brown line was the big fish. 
the big common. You know, I could see it was a good fish from where I was standing in swim four, and it kept coming out and it kept coming out. And I'm thinking that is a, a really big one. And the guy who's jumping in front of in swim two, um, he said it's definitely the coconut. It's, it's only 20, 30 meters in front of him. He can see it, 40 meters in front of him. He can see it. He's like, it's definitely that fish. But I'm, he said he's staying for another day. So I want to catch it. I'm there rocking on my bed chair thinking I need to be over there. When he sends me a message and says, actually, I've got to go home. <laughs> oh, okay then. So all the gear gets folded down. I go round into the swim. Even though that muddy line's running through the lake, I put out my zigs because that fish is out there. It eats zigs and I've got it in my head. That's how I'm going to catch it. Anyway, the night passes and I don't catch anything because they're all feeding on the bottom. And then to f further rub salt into the wound of my stupidity, Scott Geezer Grant comes wandering down the path. He says, I'm going to go in next door to you in swim three. It's quite deep in that swim. Cast out onto the bottom in 14 foot of water. It's like 10, 11 o'clock in the morning and catches a mid 30 just absolutely instantly. So bear in mind, I've now been there four nights. He just turned up and caught one like that. And I'm sitting there with four bits of flavorless black foam. And that's when you realize how stupid that, that tactic can be. You know, it's really effective. We catch loads of fish, it catches that fish but I'd cut off my nose despite my face. You know, sometimes you think you know too much and that is one of the biggest things that can, can cause a carp angler problems is thinking that you understand fully what's going on. Um, so basically with that happening, I immediately wound my zig rigs in. I came home, I got my bait boat and uh, I, took, I took a rod out to the island, I put that one on the bottom out there and then I put, I put two rods out on the island and then the third rod, where this fish, where that coconut common had been repeatedly jumping, it was towards a boat in swim five, and I uh, cast a, just a bare lead on a, on a braided line out, to, out towards this boat, and I, could, I remember where it was, because I'd seen a few fish drop out there myself, and I could get a drop, it would go, donk, but the second you pull, it'd slip, it'd go slide, and then it'd be stuck, and every time you wound in, there'd be this grassy sort of weed on, on the ledge, you know, so, so not weed that you can't present in, but weed that would make you feel that it was worse than it was out there. And you'd sort of be paranoid that if you're feeling the rig down, that it would catch up on the weed and not be sat perfectly. So I'd had it in my mind that solid bags might be a really good sort of tactic on Bayswater, especially when this grassy weed comes up. So I had the, I had the stuff with me to do it. I tied up, a, a, like it could not have been any more simpler. Basically like a, I had a little yellow mainline dumbbell on there, a uh, size six wide gape, knotless knotted to 25 pound supernatural braid and a two and a half ounce square pair inline and no lead and no tubing, no nothing like that. So for want of a, a better expression, it's almost like a kid's setup, you know, lead, swivel, braid, hook, dumbbell, you know, there's nothing else on there. It could not be any more simple. All you've got to do is cast out onto the clip, hit the clip, feel it down. If it hits some weed, it doesn't matter because it's only that thin grassy stuff, it will go down to the bottom and it present. But the trouble is, you know, it took me so long to come to this conclusion that now the fish aren't there. So now I'm ruining, you know, what you could say was a golden opportunity. The fish was there, it was jumping on this spot going, catch me, catch me, catch me. Big muddy line saying it was on the bottom and I'm fishing with flavourless black foam four or five foot off the bottom, you know, and when you look back here, that there's just nothing more ridiculous than that, than ignoring the signs. Anyway, I've got to shoot this piece, I've got to catch a fish, other swimmers where the fish are are taken. And I'm thinking, well, I've got two rods on the island. The island's a bit of a roundabout in the spring when the water warms up. The fish, they can be in one swim, but you've always got a chance of passing traffic around the island. And my swim, swim two, I had two rods out on probably what is the most productive corner of the island like over the years. So I thought, it's all right, we've got a night left. If I catch a 35 pounder for the camera, then, uh, then this will be considered a success. You know, a 35 pounder is a big fish. So we wake up on the following morning and um, no fish showing in my swim. I get a text message from the guy that's on the opposite side of the island who I can't see. And he says, ah, oh, the fish around here, um, they've been jumping all over me this morning, I've not caught anything. So now I'm doomed, you know, they're, they're over there, it's over, you know, I've just about, I'm just about to seal a five night blank or in clubbing season, you know. You know, I've brought a film crew to the lake in clubbing season to catch a big fish for them and I'm gonna come away with nothing. 
out of absolutely nowhere, I get a take on the solid bag where the big common had been jumping, and it's a, uh, I think it's a stocky. It's about 15 pound. It, it's so small um, and so just just out of a stock pond as such. It's coming like a wobble dead bait. You know, I'm thinking, hang on, this ain't gonna save the film. What is this? You know, and it comes into the net. I'm like, well, it's better than blanking, but it, this isn't gonna make a movie. You know, it's it's now getting on for 10 o'clock. The sun's pretty high in the sky. Temperature's quite warm and I was considering whether I should put it back out there. But then I remembered geezer got, got there and caught one on the bottom in the middle of the day, and maybe they were just arriving. We got a couple of hours, so I've tied another rig, put it in another bag, wrapped it up around my distance sticks. I think it was 11 rod lengths and a foot. Plopped it out there. It's hit the clip quite hard, sort of sprung back a little bit, and I followed it down, and it's gone clunk. I thought, like, well, that was better than the first one. That was lovely. Took it out of the clip, puts it in the rest, Two minutes later, an absolute monster showed over it. 30 seconds later, another big one showed over it. I was like, hang on a minute, we're gonna get one here. And off it's gone. Come on, the old Coco. Coco to common, 50 pound 12. Be all right, wouldn't it? It's a good fish. It's a common. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's a common. Oh. Talk about, oh my God. As it comes in under the rod tip, I'm then thinking, actually that looks, that's a common that is. Oh, that's, a, that's a good common, it might be the, the second biggest common, which is pin scales, 40 pounder. But it looks a bit like the big one. It's gone up and down, and the closer it's got to the net. Oh, it is. It is, that's coconut. That's the big one. It's the biggest fish in the lake. Like, yeah, that, that is the big one. That is going to be a 50 pounder, and then it's gone in, and then that's it. Get in there! Come on! Yes! Yeah, boy! <laughs> oh, yeah, talk that one on. <laughs> yes! You know, so for one minute, you're a complete. <laughs> you know, you've been fishing zig rigs for fish ripping the bottom up and the next minute you pulled it out of the bag, 52 pound common, boss, you've done it. That was really good. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Say bar. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> well, how's about that? One minute, it's a five night blank, and the next minute you've got 50 pound common. Unbelievable carp fishing sometimes. And uh, yeah, really, really pleased to get this one. The biggest one in the lake, the one I want is, all week been chatting about, he likes to eat foam, and as soon as I've gone out on the bottom, wham. Fuck oh, off. Oh, that's heavy, I've got to put it down. Right, let's get her in the water. 